Hello, in this video I will be covering my 5 favorite ways of killing the deer clops and don't starve. It is a dangerous boss. It is one of the first bosses that shows up because a lot of players start out during the autumn and they immediately transition to winter after 20 days. So while it's possible to take care of the deer clops with just average equipment, once you gain access to some more exotic stuff it becomes significantly less of a problem. And it should be noted that during the very first winter season you might just want to avoid the deer clops altogether. So without further ado, let's get into it. Tactic number 5. Kiting. Kiting is basically the method of going in for a hit on a monster and then ducking back out or dashing back out before it can strike you in return. It's pretty standard with pretty much all characters capable of doing this, although Wolfgang, of course, at his fullest form, will excel over other characters due to his bonus in both damage and speed. Now in this example that I'm using here, I am playing as Wilson and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my equipment. I tried to keep it simple, so I'm only wearing a log vest and a stocking cap, a, a winter hat. The reason behind doing this is because both of those are ready, readily available. They are easy enough to build even in your first winter season, I think. And then I also I'm using the ham bat as a weapon. Now the reason I chose the ham bat is because the spear simply does not do a sufficient amount of damage and the ham bat is relatively easy to gain access to even early in the game. It is really the second grade weapon and it should be noted that in any situation where it is favorable to do deal as much damage as possible, the ham bat is generally a great weapon. Now it does decay over time which means that it is best suited for situations where you know you will be engaging with enemies in a short amount of time and hopefully a lot of enemies at that or an enemy that has a lot of health so unlike regular weapons which degrade with use the hand bat just slowly rots away and its efficiency decreases as it rots so we're going to be using the hand bat and taking care of the deer clops here now I did spawn the deer clops down using console controls which is why this is in day two and you can see here the deer clops is pretty much going using his regular area attack I get in two hits and then he hits, you know, I, I duck out of the way, let him hit, uh, he misses me of course, and I get another couple of hits in, dash back out, back in, another couple of hits, it's pretty much a standard thing, and you'll be going, you're going about this for about 39 hits or so, it depends upon whether or not you miss any, so one of the biggest challenges of this is the immense sanity drain, now I recommend that if you don't think you'll be able to recoup your sanity easily, uh, reconsider whether or not you should be engaging the deer clops because you will have to deal with that sanity after you kill them. Uh, I recommend using jerky, that's one of the easiest ways to get some sanity back at this point in the game. But as you can see here, I'm going quite crazy already. And if I'd used this spear, I wouldn't be able to finish him off because it just does not deal enough damage to the deer clops. But there you go, um, all the meat and the eyeball. And I, I was able to engage him about took about 1 minute and 15 seconds so you know not even well a little over one sixth of a day if you're if you encounter him during the night you might want to lead him around until daytime so you can actually engage him during the daytime where he won't be ruining your base tactic number four tanking now this particular tactic generally only works well for Wolfgang and it has sort of been depreciated with the introduction of the Deerclops ability to freeze characters in the Reign of Giants DLC. So if you're playing the original game this is still a legit tactic but if you're playing the Reign of Giants DLC you're not going to be noticing a whole lot of improvement on it over the original kiting tactic and it will also require you to be using Wolfgang because of his strength bonus. Now keep in mind when using Wolfgang it is best to do this on a full stomach because that's when he gains his speed bonus and his extra strength bonus. So I'm basically this is in Rage uh, Reign of Giants and I have engaged the deer clops. Now what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to tank for one hit and then dodge out of the way before he can get his second hit in and actually freeze me in place. So I am tanking a little bit, but as you can imagine, I would be able to tank full time if I didn't have to worry too much about him freezing me in place because that's going to significantly reduce the or increase the amount of time it's going to take me to complete this. 
So there you have it. I successfully killed him. I did take quite a beating to my sanity because Wolfgang, he generally, he doesn't do so well around monsters. He, his sanity drains more. I got hit a couple of times, but you can tell with the log suit on that it's minimal, really, the amount of damage that I took. And once again, I was able to finish that in about 30 seconds. So pretty quick tactic. Tactic number three, tooth traps. Now, I set this game up here with a whole bunch of tooth traps laying around. I have about 50 of them placed down. And we're going to let the tooth traps do all the work for us. Now, this this tactic generally takes a little bit more time due to the fact that you have to get the deer clops to walk over each and every trap before they will actually spring. So you have to be a little bit patient in getting him to do exactly what you want. But over time, it also means that you will not nearly, you will not experience nearly as the same sanity drain that you would if you were getting in close with them. So that is a great tactic for that. And you know, if you have tooth traps set up to, for dealing with hounds, it's pretty legit to be able to just uh, lead the deer clops over to your hound patch where you normally kill off the hounds with the deer tra uh, tooth traps and then simply dispose of him that way. It will be costing you quite a few two, uh, teeth, I should say, because uh, each tooth trap costs one. So this will likely not be viable during the very first winter season because you just haven't been enough hounds yet. But as you get later on in the game, you want to remember that uh, you know the utility of the tooth traps is it's quite versatile. You can use it for quite a few different things. You probably do not want to position it quite this close to the camp as I did. But I managed to get the job done eventually here. As you can tell, it probably took, this is probably the longest strategy in terms of how long it took me to do it. It actually took me longer to do than the actual one that involves uh, me simply kiting with the ham bat. But at the same time, my sanity is up quite nicely yet, and I didn't even have to get hit. If I hadn't, if I hadn't been that careless, I wouldn't have gotten hit at all. Tactic number two, gunpowder. Now the thing about gunpowder is it requires a resource that is not replenishable in the world normally, uh, up, up top anyway. So really using gunpowder is probably my least favorite method of dealing with the deer class, but it can be quite effective, especially if you don't have a lot of time to prepare. If you have some uh, gunpowder simply sitting in a chest, you can pull it out, drop it on the ground, and providing the deer clops is actually standing over it, it will blow them up and kill them immediately. Now, this requires 10 gunpowder. If you do not actually want the deer clops to get burnt up because it will consume the eyeball as well, simply throw down 9 gunpowder, light it, blow him up once, and then go in and kite him for the rest of the damage to finish him off. It will be quite quick, and as long as you're able to actually get him on that gunpowder, because that's the hardest part about this tactic, I would say this tactic is the one that requires the most strategy, and I have failed at it many times. You gotta get him right on top of the gunpowder before it blows, it, the fuse is about a five second delay, and once he's on top of that gunpowder, he will simply blow up and all his meat will turn into cooked meat, the eyeball will disappear and turn into ash. And that's right, there's your gunpowder. That's your gunpowder tactic. Probably the fastest, but also it is quite expensive. So I would only recommend this for situations where you're in sort of a pinch and you don't have much time to prepare. Even the other ones don't require a whole lot of time to prepare, but you know, building a ham bat can, sometimes you don't have the time to build that, I understand. Tactic number one, the old bell. Now the old bell is one of the strongest weapons available to the player in Don't Starve Reign of Giants and Don't Starve Shipwrecked. It should be noted that the base uh, game of Don't Starve does not feature this weapon. So if you're not, if you don't have that expansion, this will not apply to you. But the great thing about the bell is it is a renewable resource. It requires Glomer's wings and his flower and every moon those things renew, so you will be able to continue to repeat this tactic every season, hopefully. Now, one of the biggest challenges once is that summoning in a, day, a big foot like this can actually destroy your camp, because that's what the big, the, the old bell does. It calls in a sort of monster to come and stomp on uh, wherever the location is that you initially rang the bell. So here I am ringing the bell, the deer clops comes in. Now I have to time this quite, it's a little bit difficult to manage to get the deer clops to stand exactly where I rang the bell. I uh, And there it is. Um, the foot did hit the deer clops, although it was pretty close. And it should be noted that what I do is I throw down a little bit of something on the ground to mark the spot where I ring the bell. That way it's easy for me to determine where I can expect the foot to hit. 
Now, using this tactic, the Deerclops will be defeated after two ringings of the bell. Uh, there I went for the first one. Now I'm just trying to circle back around because it takes some time to ring the bell. And if you're interrupted while ringing the bell, uh, you won't finish it. So I have to make sure I get enough space here between me, myself, and the Deerclops. And there, I was just barely able to ring the bell. Now I got to try to maintain the Deerclops in that place, uh, that position on the ground. You can see the foot come hammering in and there it crushes the deer clops for the second hit. We get to keep all of the meat and the eyeball, which is really great. Now, it's one of the things that I wanted to make note about the giant foot is, you know, when you're using the old bell, the giant foot comes in, it will destroy other things. As you can tell, the foot has come in and left and it has squashed stuff as it leaves. So if you ring the bell, make sure you do not do it next to your camp. Otherwise, expect some of your camp to get destroyed in the process, which could really be almost as devastating as the deer clops destroying it himself. Because that is what the deer clops is really after. He doesn't care about you too much in the beginning. He really spawns with a desire to destroy as much of your camp as possible. So those are the five, my five favorite methods of destroying or killing the deer clops in Don't Starve. I hope you found this insightful. Uh, thank you very much as always for watching and I hope to see you next time.